Okay, good morning everybody. So, um, today, we'll start off talking about a few things, and then I, I kind of have a game plan for the week, actually, and I'll get into that. But I just wanted to start off by, again, inviting everybody into the Discord channel. So I'm going to toss a link into the chat, um, and it's good for one day, apparently. Use the copy button, hold on. Um. Okay, so That's right. I invited everybody to the Discord, and I wanted to talk a little bit about the Discord and what my plan is with the Discord. So, um, still new to Discord and what we could potentially do with that. Right now, I've created a couple different channels. One where you could submit your writing samples, and uh, ideally, the goal is in the end for each of us to come together and help each other out. I don't want to kind of position myself as somebody who's an expert on this by any means. I'm just somebody who's been doing it for, you know, however long I've been doing it, and I have that interest in it. So I just want to gather with other like-minded people, and you can share your writing samples. You can ask for critiques, um, you know, assistance in any way. So it's just another way for uh, people to gather around this practice of handwriting. And then the other thing I've done is I've created a channel and um, I've entitled it Handwriting Resources. So if you're somebody who's looking for resources related to handwriting, that would be a place to go. So I haven't really began to um, fill that up, but I do have a few PDFs that I think might be valuable to add to that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that today. Um, so that is... That. And then also I have a voice channel for the morning live streams. I don't know if it would be practical yet to have that open and you hear me talking in two places simultaneously. I don't know if that's practical yet, but um, you know the, the Discord I also want to be a place where you guys could come and potentially request um, content for this live stream so maybe you have some specific question or you would like to see something specifically then um, I could potentially do that and you would make your requests through the discord so I could see that and um, you know maybe streamline that whole process so um, let's see there are a couple other things I think that's it with the discord so um, you guys are invited to join the discord using that link and be a part of the community that I'm trying to build around handwriting here. Or I don't really need to build, I just need to find it because I know that the people are out there and there's an interest for handwriting. Uh, there's uh, the next thing. Yes, the next thing. So the Calligraphy Hub is an Instagram channel and they recently did an interview of me. And so I made them a little video, and um, they did an interview. They're doing this artist profile series, so they've interviewed a bunch of different calligraphy artists, and I was really honored to be asked to participate in that. So I just wanted to share with you guys really quick the video I made for that, because I know not everybody on YouTube uses Instagram, and the video was made specifically for Instagram, so it might never see YouTube other than this opportunity right now. So I'm going to test something out for the first time on uh, this OBS and see if it works. So you guys are my guinea pigs. Hopefully it works. So the plan is, um, oh, and I don't even know if my audio is going to switch over. So my audio might not switch over, but it's just a brief 15 second video. I'm going to click this button and it may work and hopefully it does. But I'm going to go ahead and show the video now.
Yeah. 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 Okay, so I, I may have let that play twice. I wasn't sure. I um, actually wanted to do something while that played. But I have the link to their profile, and I'm going to toss that also in the chat channel right now so that if you're interested, you can go to their page, and you can do that all via the browser and just read the interview that I, um, I did for them if you're interested. So I'll go ahead and link that right now. Okay, and that's that. So uh, I woke up to that, and that was kind of exciting. I did that video for them a little while ago, and uh, it's exciting to see it up on their page now. And yeah, I, you know, the interview I, I put a lot of thought into, and I wanted to be thorough in my answers, so I did that. But if you're interested, feel free to head on over to that link and. Uh, you know, it should be one of the first videos there on their page, and you can read the interview I did for them. So that was a big honor, and I'm excited about that. Um, this week, I was thinking, because I can see in my analytics that the left-handed writing is one of the hits that um, attracts the greatest amount of people to my channel, because I'm doing stuff writing with the left hand, and in some videos investigating. Uh, how to write best with the left hand, etc., etc. So I figured that it might be interesting for myself to spend this time in the morning devoted to the singular task of experimenting more with the left hand. And so I don't know how long I'm going to do this for. I was thinking originally a week, and then I thought, what if I wanted to do it longer than a week? Maybe we'll do Monday, Wednesday, Fridays devoted to left hand. So I'm going to see how this plays out today and then decide. But I'm leaning right now towards a Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And that way we can continue to do this maybe every other week or maybe every week. Um, so And maybe if you have an opinion about this, you can head on over to the Discord channel and let me know what you think. So that way um, we, can, we can brainstorm this content together. Okay, so the, the camera angle also, you might notice, is a little higher up. And I did that intentionally so that as, as I go through this session, you can see well what I'm doing. So the, the camera is a little higher, and in that way we're showing off a little bit more of the table. And that's going to allow for you to see what you need to see. So if you're a left-hander or if you're learning to write with your left hand and you wear a watch, you definitely want to take off your watch before you start practicing handwriting. I know that's not the most practical thing in the world and what if you know, you're somewhere where you can't just take off your watch to write. But the obstruction makes a really big difference, especially if you're trying to embrace some whole arm writing. So we're just going to go ahead and jump into it. If you have any questions along the way, feel free to ask questions. But today we're going to be focusing a bit on the left hand. Forward handwriting, because I usually write backwards with the left hand. But we're going to do left-handed, forward, whole arm movement, do some experimenting, get back into the groove with the left hand, and see where this takes us. Hopefully it can help some of you in your journey to uh, improving your own penmanship. One thing that uh, I did notice recently, because there was a question about it in the Discord, Scrambled Milk asked me if there were any resources that I knew of other than Marvis that talked about writing with the left hand. And the only one that I can think of that 
well, they, they, he really didn't address it in too much more than a single page either, but in Michael Soule's American Cursive Handwriting, he does lay out two different images on the most common positions left-handers use when handwriting. And the first one to a body um, directly facing the table. We have this angle right here, where it seems as if this corner goes through that corner down into the chest, which kind of makes sense for whole, whole arm movement. This movement does kind of make sense. Um, It's amazing how something so familiar, such as handwriting, becomes this n completely new thing when you switch it over to the left hand. And even from writing backwards to forwards, because writing backwards at this point is just so natural to me that writing forwards is a is a, again a relearning, a relearning of something. Yeah. All right, we'll go ahead and start off with some drills. So interestingly enough, with the left hand doing the counterclockwise rotation, with the right hand that movement is more of an um, an under turn uh, in in motion, like the way it feels feels as if the hand is turning over. But compared to because when you switch hands, the the movement of the arm rather than being mirrored of what it was it's now backwards so it's kind of it's a, it's an overturn rotation and the the one thing i often struggle with the left hand and doing drills with the left hand is that the the angle of the paper and the axis of the slant uh, are different and and that forces the emphasis to be on a a different motion rather than uh, the emphasis being on the push 
where you normally with the right hand I'm pushing. The emphasis of the left hand seems to be more on a kind of swiping motion. And so that, that takes some getting used to. And then to keep the compact oval on this new slant is, is a good challenge. Trying not to twist my wrist. I tend to twist it with the left. Okay, that's better. See, that's the opposite rotation. And that rotation feels a little bit more uh, natural. I've always had a... Uh, I've always leaned more towards the underturn motion. Um, it's a little bit easier for me in, intuitively for some reason. It's been that way with the right hand. So let's, let's continue to do this here. One thing I've noticed that I have a very hard time writing and talking simultaneously. So I may have to pause when I want to say something and i got to remember to do that because if I start talking it just I lose concentration on both ends.
can you see the difference here um, between these two samples? So this is um, right now going in this direction, and this one is going in this direction. And so you can kind of see how the top sample is a little bit more upright in its slant, and that's what I'm aiming for. I'm looking for a little bit more of an upright, um, an upright S, um, slant. And with the bottom one, you can see that it kind of flattens out. It becomes really flat, so um, I'm not quite sure yet how to improve that movement-wise, but. I can visually see the difference and like I said the, the motions are backwards compared to writing with the right hand so this becomes a, what I would consider like an overturn motion and so it's the unnatural rotation for me in, in, in movement so it's one that I'll have to work on more like for example, letters like the letter R, or the letter P, um, the letter B, all feature the overturn rotation. For me, it took more work to get it right with the right hand because that overturn rotation is a little bit more challenging for me. Seems like the way to solve this problem though. is by just emphasizing the push up here on the underturn. So that's a little bit more upright. And this, the drills still look horrible, but I'm not really worried about the quality of the drills. I'm looking to get the movement and find the movement that feels comfortable and natural. I'm not forcing it or overly straining my arm in order to get the movement out. I, want, I need it to be free-flowing. <clears throat> and that's a big um, reason why we do movement drills to begin with. It's just about um, loosening up those mu muscles and finding the movement and the placement of everything so that the movement and everything are in harmony with one another so you're not straining your shoulder in order to get the movement right. That's, that's why you spend time doing this and finding placement just so that when you go to write it, all that is intuitive, it's second nature because you found the position that is already most comfortable. Okay, so hopefully you can see in the multiple angles that tilting a little bit more to the right. So there's there's a slight angle here, um, and and then the paper, rather than being directly um, top corner to bottom corner and diagonal into the center of my body, it actually goes more towards my left shoulder. So right now that's the position, and then my left arm rests somewhat parallel with the edge of the paper, so edge of this paper, and you know, I have some motion there. So, so if you're a left-hander interested in whole arm movement, this is the position that I'm finding most comfortable so far. And it allows for me to do some pushing and pulling, but it still reduces the, the push-pull drill to a more of a side swipe drill. I found that with the left hand, my slant tends to be much more dramatic. Um, and you can kind of tell here the slant on these ovals that I, uh, 
guy that I'm a little more fond of. This one is a little bit more upright. I think this is more what I'm looking for over here. But you can see how dramatic that is. Let's see if we can actually maybe by making the corners line up with the center of my chest, we can actually get a subtle slant. Okay. You can kind of see how the spacing here is pretty nice and even between the downward strokes. It's something I've noticed with the left hand. Spacing seems to be really intuitive. I don't have to think too much about it. Um, with the right hand, I have to think a lot about it. And then over here, you can kind of see that the spacing begins to get off. Things get a little bit tighter. And part of the reason that is, is I'm reaching the edge of my riding zone. So now I'm, I'm really forcing myself beyond the comfortable limit to try to continue doing the strokes. So interestingly enough, with the left hand, because it's my non-dominant hand, things like that, like noticing that I'm at the end of my writing zone, are a little bit more challenging because it takes so much focus just to hold the pen and create the movement properly that I often will lose track of... Uh, that sort of detail but the spacing something that seems to be coming really intuitive through the left hand um, I don't have to think as much about so it's interesting how this dynamic of writing both hands has taught my dominant side a lot about writing and you know the left hand really offers some insight that I wouldn't have gained otherwise so I think that's interesting also I have uh, in the area here, we're, we're in the middle of a storm, so if the stream goes out for whatever reason, it might be the storm. I just heard that the rain picked up outside, so I don't know if you guys can hear the rain at all, but there's a storm going on here, and it's good because Southern California doesn't get enough rain, but 
bad for streams, unfortunately. I didn't coordinate well with the weather. Posture is also really important. Uh, never underestimate the value of good posture, especially when it comes to handwriting. Go ahead and I'll offer a bit of a close-up right now on the, the exercises because I know with the pencil it's a little bit difficult to see. But this is what I'm doing right now. So I did some ovals to start, doing some pushing and pulling, and then I move into some spacing. Can't tell if this is in focus. Okay, and then I wanted to kind of um, go back into some ovals now. So let's see that one of the, the struggles I'm having with the oval is the motion to the top of the oval. Uh, so I figured the push pull might be a good way to kind of figure that motion out. And I'm also finding too that tilting to my right side isn't as helpful. So I might aim for a more uh, front position towards the desk and that it seems to be a little bit more comfortable it kind of frees up my arm for a little bit of a larger writing zone
that felt much more comfortable. So all of this preliminary work has led to that. I'll do a few more drills here. Somebody had asked me about left-handed writing and I brought up that American Cursive Handwriting by Michael Soule. And I was doing some reading in his book and I came across the section where he's talking about writing height, letter height, and I found that restricting the height of my letters and my drills, especially to a total of three-eighths of an inch here, made a really big difference on my right-handed writing. So I found that very interesting. I never thought that going smaller was going to be a move that was going to create kind of a jump in the quality of my handwriting. But since I've done that, I've noticed that uh, my handwriting has improved. I was a bit, I have to say, whimsical with my sizing. Prior, I would usually do the compact drill uh, to four lines, so twice that height at um, six eighths or three quarters of an inch. And yeah, so going smaller seemed to help me out quite a significant bit. And I, I think that's quite interesting. So we're going to do a tapering oval now. So we've done tapering ovals in the overturn rotation. Now we're going to do them in the under. And this, this particular set of drills, uh, it's a horrible line. This particular set of drills comes from uh, Michael Soule's book as well, American Cursive Handwriting. So in in all my post stuff, I'll go ahead and link his book in the description. So if you're watching this in the playback, you can find it there. It's actually an extremely thorough book. He, I mean, it's over 350 pages, a very, very extensive handwriting book. And he talks about movement uh, quite a bit in there as well. But he doesn't overemphasize whole arm movement. He, he talks about combination. I think that's really good for a novice to see as well. Cause Michael Soule is a master penman and uh, you know, wrote for the president for several several terms. And you know, So he's, he's an extremely proficient in handwriting. And so I think to get his perspective on the whole thing of practical handwriting, such as American Cursive, I think it's really useful. So it's a resource I highly recommend and I'll make sure to toss that in the link or in the description down below for you guys to check out.
Now we're going to do some spiral ovals. So we'll start off doing ovals twice as big as we've been doing them. So let's bring out the aim between those two lines. Another thing I focus on or try to focus on is not going too fast. Sometimes going too fast is kind of counterproductive, so you kind of want to find this happy medium between um, control and a, a swift movement, or, or really what you should be aiming for is a swift movement. It's very directed and aimed. It's, it's not just fast for the sake of being fast. see so these all three of these ovals are going over this one is going under and you can just see right away the reduction in quality there between those see how this one's fatter a little wider uh, it's not as um, you know the slant is all wonky compared to the other three yeah three there's three there okay Something that I've noticed in general with these movement drills is you never want to be hitting the edge of your limit. So for example, your arm is resting on the table, it's rolling around on the, the forearm muscle, and there's kind of a limit to the uh, elasticity of your skin. And so if you hit that limit, you'll kind of find a little bit of a, a jolt in your movement, and it's not ideal. So I think that was one of the things also that helped when I downscaled all of the exercises in my writing was I was in, I was coming I was even further away from that limit of uh, range of motion and I think that helps a lot in in these movement exercises and just being aware of that so when you place your paper if the you know the line that you want to hit at the top is at the very limit of your range of motion you might want to move your paper down a little bit and kind of find a place more in the, the center of that rather than reaching the limit.
It allows for a smoother rotation over the, the tops and bottoms of your oval. Yeah, I think, it, and it's especially true on the bottom, I, I find it even more disturbing if the, the limit is on the bottom. It's really amazing how the overturn just feels so much more natural at this point. It reminds me a lot of when I first started implementing some whole arm movement with my left hand um, because it was very similar. I would have a very hard time uh, over with the overturn motion compared to the underturn motion. So this is very similar. It's kind of nostalgic in a way. And, and this is another value I, I find behind learning to write with the opposite hand is that it, it kind of takes you back to being a kid again. You're learning something new. It's something that you're incredibly familiar with at this time. Most people I work with are adults. So as an adult, learning to write again with the left hand, it, it takes you back to a different time in your life where you're a little bit more of a kid or you're a little bit more playful. And uh, I think that's really valuable to have in your life. like when I first learned to juggle I, that those first few hours of practice were horrific I was dropping the ball every other second but I was laughing the whole time because it made me feel like such a kid chasing around these tennis balls and bending over and picking them up and trying again and failing again and going and getting the balls and I, I think that's a really valuable uh, if, if not for anything else learn something new for how it makes you feel about um, you know, you're, you're yourself. You don't know everything. You're still, you're new to so many things. So it makes you feel like a kid again. You might as, I think that's an emotion to embrace.
few. That was tough. I have to be really precise and slow with that set of drills. Okay, I want to show you guys a little bit more closely what I've done today. So we started off just kind of like warming up the muscles, just doing rotations, looking for the slant, figuring out the angle of the paper. Um, and that's all being done here at the top, you know, working on the movement across the page a little bit. Um, with this exercise here, staying within the writing zone, not letting for um, things to crunch up here, uh, like in this line. Trying to get it to stay focused on the paper. It keeps wanting to focus on my hand. And then I I did the American cursive movement drills, kind of just like the introductory movement drills for that booklet. Uh, I find them quite nice. It's a nice little routine to start off your writing with. So here I did an overturn rotation followed by an underturn rotation. And then here are the push pull drills. And then I do a tapering overturn the tapering underturn. So on this side here, we start from bigger to smaller. Here we start small and go to big at the end. There. So then you do the same for the underturn rotation. And then in this next set of lines here, what you do is a spiraling oval. So this is the overturn oval and you go and you spiral down to the center. And then I did it again with the over, sorry, the underturn. So the opposite rota rotation. And then in this last set of drills here, what we do is that same spiral, but as you get down to the center of it, you then shoot out into the following oval. And this is a really good exercise, helps a lot with spacing. Also, it kind of helps you understand your, your writing zone and where to stay within. So you do that um, both directions, overturn and underturn. And so that is a set of drills. So that's a really good uh, way to warm up your writing session. And you know, if you're not talking like I am to a camera in your bedroom by yourself, <laughs> then you will uh, do it in less than an hour because it only takes about 20 minutes or so at most to get through that set of exercise, especially if your left hand is your dominant hand. You won't have to do um, as much investigation. You will find your position a little bit more quickly, I think. And um, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and end the stream there. Like I said, I am going to be um, managing the Discord. So there's resources in the Discord, and I want to invite you guys to include some of your writing samples. So maybe if you practice simultaneously with me during this session, go ahead, snap an image of that, and you can drop it into your Discord um, channel. Uh, the one that's titled writing samples so that we can have one with all the images then um, you know we can see each other's writings and I don't know enjoy that um, I feel like there was something else I wanted to say just now right well you know the discord thing is new to me still learning how to manage all that but I figured you know I might as well just start it and wait for when I know everything about it I heard something the other day, it said if you wait for it to be perfect, you'll never do it. So I'm not waiting for things to be perfect, I'm just going ahead and jumping in and hoping that you'll join me on that ride. And, uh, you know, learning as we go, as with everything. So thank you guys for tuning in today. I will be back tomorrow morning, same time, maybe earlier. I'm thinking I might have to push this an hour earlier. I don't know. If you're strongly opposed, let me know in the Discord. Um, maybe make a post in there as well stating. Oh, that's what I wanted to say. The Discord. You can download an app for your phone. And I just found this the other day. But you can just post pictures from your phone on there. So that makes it easier. Anyways, that's all that I have for today. If you have any questions and you're watching this in the playback, please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. I will go through and read those and answer them. Oh, there's one more thing. Somebody in the last stream, his name was Jose, I can't remember the, the last name, but they said that they purchased my book and they, they posted their comment right at the very end, right as I was hitting end stream and I didn't get a chance to say anything to that person. 
So Jose, if you're watching this, thank you so much for purchasing my book. I'm very glad that you're enjoying it and, uh, and I hope you find it helpful in your journey. So thanks again, everybody, for tuning in. We will see you guys tomorrow. Hopefully the stream quality looks a little better and um, we have uh, less rain around to interfere with it. Anyways, take care.